John Updike once said, If the phrase woman of letters existed, Joyce Carol Oates would be foremost in this country entitled to it. Even if Updike's accolade seems unintentionally condescending, his praise was obviously heartfelt, the words of one first-class writer complimenting another on outstanding literary achievements. In fact, if you type in the phrase, Joyce Carol Oates Awards, into Google, you will find a list of awards that span decades. For example, here's a photograph taken in March of uh, 2010 of President Barack Obama awarding Oates the National Humanities Award for a lifetime of contributions to American literature. Oates was born on a farm in 1938 in upstate New York and attended a one-room schoolhouse in her elementary years. She later drew on these early experiences in her writing and in stories such as Heat, tales set in small town rural communities, readers find in Oates' depiction of small town life rich layers of complexity, which often reveal dark undercurrents. After earning her BA in English at Syracuse University in 1960, Joyce Carol Oates received her MA from the University of Wisconsin in 1961, the same year she married a fellow student, Raymond Smith, who became an English professor and editor. They were married for 47 years, and upon his death, Oates struggled with depression, eventually writing her award-winning memoir about her experience, A Widow's Story, which was published in 2011. Joyce Carol Oates achieved early success. Her first collections of short stories, By the North Gate, published in 1963, and Upon the Sweeping Flood and Other Stories, published in 1966, both received recognition for their realistic portrayals of characters and themes. Critic Greg Johnson says of the stories in these two collections, quote, Oates places her characters within a shifting chaotic landscape, tentatively poised at the edge of the Nietzschean abyss, searching desperately for identity, self-assertion, and meaning. Even after having written over 50 novel novels, collections of short stories, poetry, plays, essays, and book reviews, and also experimenting with a variety of themes and genres, Oates often returns to the themes found in these two early collections. Oates' most anthologized story is Where Are You Going, Where Have You Been, first published in Cornell University's literary magazine Epic in 1966. Actually, it's interesting that Joyce Carol Oates, in her role as editor, made the choice not to include this story in the Oxford Book of American Short Stories, perhaps believing it is over-anthologized. In any case, the story, which begins conventionally enough, centers on Connie, a modestly rebellious teenage girl, and her budding interest in boys. Her encounter with an older boy leads to his stopping by in his gold convertible when Connie is home alone, and here the story takes an ominous turn. The story is loosely based on Charles Schmidt, a serial killer who was profiled in life in the 1960s, and, his en en and the story's ending and central message have been debated in literature classes since its publication. Like Where Are You Going, Where Have You Been? The short story Heat also explores the intersection among youth, sex, vi and violence. The narrator, who is now an adult looking back, tells us the story of the 11-year-old Kunkel twins and their murder by an older neighbor boy, Roger Whipple. Remembering the vivacious twins flying by on their bicycles, the narrator muses, death was coming for them, but they didn't know it. In her introduction to Heat, Oates writes that the challenge of Heat was to present a coherent and emotionally resonant narrative in a seemingly a-casual manner. For how else can we speak of the unspeakable except through the distancing prism of technique? In closing this lecture, I thought it would be interesting to look at writers who influenced Oates. When asked once about how she would describe herself as a writer, 
She replied, I consider myself a thoroughly American writer in the tradition of the great psychological realists, Melville, Hawthorne, Henry James, who nonetheless delve into the mythic and emblematic. Some of my Gothic fiction is akin to Edgar Allan Poe, who wrote of the nightmare side of America.